you see it every day. People flashing money, showing you the money from Forex, from Amazon FBA, and day trading. You're seeing people who are talking about, I'm making $3,000 in 30 minutes. You, you see this stuff all over the internet. And I got a little curious. I was wondering, what was the success rate of people doing Forex, day trading, and Amazon FBA? Let's start off with Amazon FBA, my favorite whipping child. For years, I have several videos on this YouTube channel talking about no eBay, no Amazon, more money. Look them up if you're interested. I was in a business where I had to buy low and sell high. This is what got me in the storage auction business, where I could go buy a storage unit locker for typically $250 to $500 and sell all of the contents out of that room for two up to potentially $10,000. So I was buying low and I was selling high. These immutable laws of business don't change because you're doing Amazon FBA. I remember a particular case where someone wanted to argue me up and down that having three and 6% margins was a good thing. People were drunk on the Amazon FBA business model because of the high velocity, or I should say the potential high velocity of sales. Like if you could sell something and make $2 per item, but you sell a thousand a day, that's $2,000 a day. That's $60,000 a month. However, there was some problems and consequences with this, which I pointed out in my videos. And this is what's funny. I used to have many, many friends who were Amazon FBA sellers. And over the years, the complaining went from a low moan to a primal scream. Amazon is cutting me off. Amazon suspended me. I did this, I did this, like I predicted in those no eBay, no Amazon videos. See, here's the thing. Having an online business does not remove the things that you need to do to run a business. I came to the internet with 10 years of business experience and I was able to win because I knew that I had to market. I knew I had to have structure. I, there were so many things that you, as smart as you are, don't know what you have to do to get your business crunk. You're, you're smart. You're really smart, you're an intelligent person, but there is a learning curve to business. And many people feel that Amazon FBA is, is a cheat code. Well, I don't have to worry about learning how to drive traffic. This is one of the most popular things on Amazon FBA, running ads on Amazon. Why would one be running ads on Amazon? So they can drive traffic to their listings. Even Amazon FBA sellers are learning that these things that they took for granted are now biting them in the butt like chomp chomp. Because I remember some people were doing a live stream and they were talking about me and it was just like, I don't understand why one of them doesn't want to do eBay. That's where all the customers are. You just go ahead, put your business there and get their customers. That's why. Because I knew, and this is Cameron's law, at some point, all third parties behave in their best interest. Amazon cut out the affiliate program this year. Amazon has made it hard for new sellers to get into profitable categories. Amazon will take your sales data and go out and buy the same product and sell against you. And this is why only 8% of the people who do Amazon FBA make minimum wage. Let me say this again. It's not that 8% are making millions. No, 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 no. 8% are making a fry cooked salary doing Amazon FBA. And when you get into someone who is massively successful, like Pharma Packs, which was started by a businessman who had three stores before he went to Amazon, uh, one of the largest sellers on Amazon. He was a businessman before he went to Amazon. And Pharma Packs also has their own website as well as an addition to running stuff on Amazon FBA. 8% are making minimum wage. And when you get into the folks who are doing like two and three million a year, once again, let's, let's go ahead and be clear because there are many Amazon sellers who are doing a million, doing two, three, four, five million a year. And this is a question that I used to ask all of the time and I would piss people off. 
What is your net? Just because you have revenues of two or three million a year don't mean that you're making decent money. One guy did a Reddit post and talked about he was selling five million a year, but he only took $50,000 a year home. 50 out of five million. Because he was selling his items for such slim margins. Well, actually, we go ahead and say 99% of the Amazon FBA selling. Let's go to day trading. You see the ads. You see all of these ads, all of these courses about how simple, how easy it is to day trade. Well, here is something that you will never see in another YouTube video. For you to make money, that means that someone lost money. Let me be really clear. In the case of a stock appreciating, you can make money with the appreciation of a stock and no one loses money. However, when you're trading, buying and selling stocks with high frequency trading, for you to win, someone has to lose. There is only so much money in the market. So if you're day trading and you're winning, there's someone that's losing. And also, this is something else you will not know. When you're day trading, you're trading against institutional investors. There's this one company that has like 33% of its staff has math PhDs. So you, in your underwear, eating your Wheaties or uh, Frosted Flakes or Cheerios are going to beat these guys who went to school, who have studied math theory, who know how to count cards, I don't think so. The average number of successful day traders out of all day traders is 1.7%. And these are people who make a little money. They're not making big money. These are people who make 1.7%. Now this is what's funny. You have mid toe and red pill men who are not getting married because there is a falsely advertised 50% divorce rate. The divorce rate is 39%. And it's if you have money, the divorce rate is like 20%. So you have a higher chance of getting married and staying married than you have being a successful Amazon FBA seller and being a successful day trader. But this is all of the rage because people are fed up with their jobs. I'm sick of working for the man. I'm gonna tell my boss to kiss my butt. I'm ready to move on. I'm better than this. Really? If you're better than that, where are your results? You are where you are because that is the sum of your abilities. You're not better than that. You're right where you need to be. You might be frustrated. You might be upset. You might be pissed off, but you're where you are because I speak from experience. You know why? Because in 1999, 1998, 97, I was right where you are. I was working suck jobs because that was the sum of my experience, that was the sum of my skills, that was the sum of my human value to the marketplace. So if you're just sitting there like, I feel like a CEO, where are your CEO results? This is why people are lured into Amazon FBA and day trading because it's a promise of a big payday for little to no effort. I was watching the video where a guy was like, we start at 9.30 and we're done about 10. Then we have the rest of our day. And this guy has been caught scamming people. He, he's a day trader and talking about the setups and all this other stuff. And I was watching a video of a professional investment grade day trader. Well, not day trader, but a trader. He isn't day trading, an institutional trader. And he was just talking about that if you were to get 2% gains per day, that would come out to 116% gains per year and you'd be making more money than Jeff Bezos. It's all hype. It's all hype. Let's go on to everyone's favorite thing to talk about. Someone on this channel told me, Forex is great, you should learn. And my response is, why would I take a pay cut? See, this is one of the reasons I've started to flex. I make more money than most day traders, most Amazon FBA sellers, and most Forex people. Why would I leave what I know is a proven money maker to do something because it's sexy? See, this is where Amazon FBA, 
This is where day trading and this is where Forex comes in. It's sexy. I can roll out of bed, study a few charts, and make thousands of dollars. It's sexy. It's appealing. It appeals to your do nothing lazy bone. But see, here's something else. There are a few successful Forex people, there's a few successful day traders here on YouTube, and there's a few successful Amazon FBA people. Their channels are not that big. You wanna know why? Because they talk about, you gotta work. You gotta put in the work. One dude said he lost money for five years learning how to do Forex. That ain't sexy. That's not appealing. See, ego, and it's pride and ego, that will have you feeling that you could take an online course and that you can beat someone with a PhD in math with trading. That's your pride, that's your ego. These companies on Wall Street are paying these people two to $300,000 to work for them in their trading rooms. But you in your underwear, you in your Spider-Man underwear with a bowl of cereal is gonna do better than these guys. See, the appeal when these people create advertising here on YouTube, it's embedded with emotional triggers to get you to buy. It's not embedded with facts because the facts are pretty dismal. The facts are pretty damning. If you knew that you had a 99% chance of failure if you did X, Y, and Z, you would not do X, Y, and Z. But they don't talk about that. The number of successful Forex traders is less than 1%. Right now, there are people teaching courses, people doing pips, and they're winning small. Because this is something else that no one will tell you with the day trading in Forex. If you want to do two to $300,000 a year, you need a trading count with a million dollars in it. That is never mentioned. You'll see countless videos of how someone took two, three, four, five thousand and turn it into a fifty thousand dollar account. But you know how hard it is to turn a two thousand dollar account into a million dollar account. If you had a successful trader who was skilled, who was knowledgeable, it would take them years to do that. And it would consist of having positive green days consistently. It would take them six to 10 years to turn $2,000 into a million dollars. And that would be a phenomenal feat. Cause see, it's, it's, it's peeling to your ego. It's like, yeah, I'm smart enough. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can beat these dudes on Wall Street with their PhDs and all this math and their high speed computers. You don't even know the game. So Amazon FBA, 8% are making a fry cook salary. Day traders, 1.7% and Forex, 1%. But once again, it is so sexy. It's so sexy. It's so sexy that you can like kiss your, your boo in the morning, go in the next room, trade for a few hours, make you two, three, four, five thousand dollars, then have the rest of the day to chill. Then wake up the next morning and do it all over together and you have it weekends off because the markets are closed. See, I'm telling you this because with the corporate citizen, what have I been telling you guys? It's gonna take you two to three years to get your businesses going, which is why you need to start as soon as possible so you can go ahead and get to get it. But I've never lied about that. And to my testament, I make a lot of money by telling people the truth because the reality is it's gonna take you a few years. Let, let's talk about Omni and the Hellcat and why he lost all his money. You, you have money habits. You have a way of dealing with money. And if a large infusion of cash comes into your life and you still have those habits of dealing with money, guess what? You're gonna lose that money. I did some research. Omni and Hellcat only had that money for two years. Now, it is rumored that he had $50 million in the bank. That is generational wealth money. That's the type of money to set up the next two to 300 years if you know what to do with it. He didn't know what to do with it. He didn't pay taxes. He got some copyright piracy issues. He lost that money. Once again, you will be making money, then you're gonna give it back to the market because you don't know, understand money. You don't know, because this is one of the things that I had someone who wanted to 
debate me. If you are an investor, and let's talk about what an investor is. An investor is someone that shows up with this and puts it down on the table and say, take my money and make some more money. And I'm gonna sit back and chill. That's an investor. If you're doing more than that, you're an entrepreneur. If you're doing wholesale, wholesaling real estate, you're not an investor. You have none of this. You're not an investor. You have put yourself to become a middle man. You're finding people with properties, you're finding properties with problems, and you're putting yourself in the middle between that seller and that buyer. You, 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 you just become the middle man. And it's a legitimate way to make money, but you're not a real estate investor until you show up with some of this and put it into a property, then you become an investor. See, here's one of the reasons that I push business so hard. Y'all know I bought a Porsche in the beginning of August. I already got all that money back. Not because of investments, because I have a business. A business generates profits much faster than investments, like a hundred times faster. And this is why I keep pushing you guys to start businesses. But I'm in com competition with these seductive, sexy Amazon FBA, Forex, and day trading ads. There are many MGTO men who will sign up for day trading, Amazon FBA, and Forex because they don't know the failure statistics. Because if they knew the failure statistics, and that's why I'm doing this video, so you do not go, because like, literally, if you started a car wash that made you $3,000 a month, you would be doing better than if you signed up for Amazon FBA, if you signed up for Forex, if you signed up for day trading. Because the majority of the people who day trade lose money. So, if you want to legitimately make some money, it's gonna take you a few years. Let's just keep the buck in these mean internet streets. It's gonna take you a few years. Sign up for the corporate citizen, the corporate toolbox, and I'm gonna teach you how to set up your legal structure, which is very, very important for taxes. Then I'm gonna teach you how to start, structure, and scale your business. Links below. So that's all I got for you. This has been another G-rated episode. So I will see you in this next video. They'll be right here.